もし他の誰かがこのノートを拾ったとしてこの世に不必要な人間を消すことのできる奴がいるかいるわけがないでも僕なら僕にならできるいや僕にしかできないんだやろうデスノートで世の中を変えてやる Cheers and welcome. This is one and only Sugi Khan, as always. And today I'm going to give my personal two cents about these recent bannings of The Rain Man, Tyler One, and Gross Core. And there has been a few videos already on this subject made by Richard Lewis, the young Gooby, and I think those videos were really good. But I thought I would be giving more insight to the case and maybe give more perspective on the matter, something to chew on, essentially. And we have to like start by talking about the terms of service. So, terms of service, most of games, websites, applications have them. If you break terms of service, that doesn't necessarily mean you're breaking the law. That's something that people have to understand. And if you break the terms of service in Steam, for example, that shouldn't affect your standing or affiliation with League of Legends. And I think that is one of the problems here. Some people are okay with these people getting banned. People didn't like them. But some people felt that probably in the mix that the ban shouldn't like extend to other platforms. And this has been a bit of a problem where Riot has this sort of a stronghold over Twitch a bit. Because it's the largest, largest game being streamed in terms of numbers and streamers. And they have a lot of influence on Twitch. Maybe they could like one day say this game can't be streamed on Twitch, and Twitch would be like they would be taking a huge loss. And、um, I think so. There is definitely some type of a you know like in those old Batman TV shows they had the bat phone or whatever. So there's this quick dial up from Riot Base to Twitch headquarters, and they make a call. Let's ban Grosscore, and Twitch says okay, let's do that. And that's how essentially this、um, mutual partnership is working right now. And this is one of the problems because a lot of these media platforms like Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, these are companies that exist on the Silicon Valley. And、um, these places are hugely left, very liberal, and, well, or should I say the regressive left. And、um, the, these guys have a lot of agendas. And they, in, in the ideal case, in my opinion, they should be neutral platforms. They should host all types of sides and opinions and etc. But that doesn't seem to be the case anymore. And,、um, and the problem of like, when they have the similar ideas, there's a higher chance they will be working with each other. And this is the case between League of Legends and Twitch. Both of them have similar goals. Twitch wants to be a monopoly, they kinda are. You have other things like Hitbox, Azubu is pretty much dead on the water. But you know, Hitbox, Hitbox is doing like okay ish, but it still doesn't have, you know, significant viewership. But you know, when Twitch bans people, people go to Hitbox. So I guess they're kinda losing the people to the other side, which is maybe long term not be very good decision, Twitch. Just saying. And、um, Riot also wants to do very monopolized esports, even though they claim to do otherwise in a lot of their videos and speeches and bullshit PR statements that they make. But all of their things have been very limiting other things. You have to remember that a lot of the third party events that hosted the amazing tournaments, ESL, MLG, IPL, a lot of these things were doing a better job than Riot events then, back then, and these guys were really like growing the space up. And then Riot pretty much says, Fuck you guys, we're gonna take this monopoly and run everything ourselves. 
and that has been the case right now. And um, I don't, I don't like monopolies. It's really retarded on any type of a level. It never really works, and somebody is usually getting fucked over. The biggest problem in this case is once you're banned from like certain like I don't know how it works with Steam. Let's say you get banned from CS:GO. Will that reach out to Dota too? Uh, will it reach out to other Steam games? And when re Riot or Blizzard or these big companies will release multiple titles, they can ban you from all the titles across the board because they own the IPs and they have a you know straight connection to Twitch where they can influence how their game is viewed by the streamers and I think this sort of a like right has been selling this whole you know toxicity thing for quite some time that they want to combat it they want to policy policy it I'm personally I think you should be able to say anything except death threats or direct threats long as it falls under free speech I think criticism or some type of a minor flaming is pretty much okay if you don't want to listen to it you just unmute the mute the person and that's my take on it and that's why I don't really agree with White's policies on these matters I don't agree with any of these bans that happened griefing when on Rayman's case is a different thing. I think he should have been just, you know, give a ranked ban. I don't know why they haven't introduced that yet to the game. I think that would perhaps make him reconsider his position or situation. But, you know, I don't know. And just to kind of wrap this up, you know, Light leaving Riot. Um, I think Light was pretty much fired from the company. I definitely think that he didn't take a voluntary leave. Either it was something like Light wanted to perhaps enforce more heavily the toxicity bans, or and Riot didn't agree, or Riot believes that this whole like reputation on this combating toxicity hasn't worked out, or certain goals of toxicity haven't been met, so they decided, hey, let's kick Light out. But I don't think there's probably some type of disagreement that happened. But it's kind of funny that a lot of people have been banned since he left. So I guess they're taking a more direct approach. But I think a lot of the problems is Riot is not putting a lot of effort in reforming these people. It's the same thing like what some jails used to do. Like some jails actually have like reformation programs so they can come back to society and be good citizens and get a jobs and shit. But these banned things are not like, fuck you, you're banned. But, you know, you're not really like encouraging them to be non-toxic. There's still no good systems in place to enforce people to be non-toxic. The Hunter system was a flop. You could have implemented the same system that Overwatch where you would get MVP points. And if you get like a lot of MVP points, you would get an extra chest or something. There would be some type of a gain from being like non-toxic. In real society, if you are non-toxic, you're probably going to succeed more. It's going to influence you. In Riot Games, in League of Legends, it doesn't. In a lot of these games, it doesn't really benefit you and aside from getting banned to be non-toxic. And you have to put up some, you know, shit to make people want to put an effort, you know, to be non-toxic, you know? You gotta give them a reason, you gotta give them hope. But, um, I'm not gonna, like, really, um, jabble all about this anymore. I'm just, as a closing thoughts, I think this relationship with Twitch and Riot Games is really alarming and I don't want it to expand to someone like YouTube or YouTube channel gets banned or Twitter or Facebook. That could be a future where we're living on. And I don't want these type of monopolies and like fucking old boys clubs like existing. And these are very dangerous things. Anyhow, thanks for watching and um, I've got this final clip for you guys before we end uh, and I will see you hopefully next time. Remember to subscribe. Well, Light, it looks like you've lost. Remember how, in the beginning, when we first met, I told you that I'd be the one writing your name in my notebook. <laughs> You'll die here. That is part of the agreement. Well, Light, it's been interesting. <laughs>